Helping others is a calling. It's not a job. Elijah, hello. Hey, Boris. It has been a long time. Been a couple months. Been uh, hiding away in didactic gear. Yeah, in, in your cave. In my uh, in my didactic hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your didactic hell. <laughs> your study study cave. Yep. Just well, nine, nine to five classroom, and then come home and study some more. Rinse and repeat seven days a week. If you had to guess on average, like how many more hours after the nine to five do you have to study? Um, if I don't have any exams within that week, I'll study like an hour or two a day. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the day, I'll just spend time with my son or just like watch shows. I've been watching a lot of shows. <laughs> yeah. What are you into right now? Oh, well, I watch a lot of like, like Japanese cartoons, like anime. <laughs> That's the stuff I'm into. So <laughs> nice. And your son's I'll into that it. too. Yeah. 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 I watch it with my son. He loves it. <laughs> like, uh, like Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z, Demon Slayer, like some of the newer ones. Yeah, I, I think I saw a story about Dragon Ball Z, like the guy who created it just died or something. Yeah, like yeah, he died recently. I forgot his name, but yeah, he passed away yeah. like I think a couple weeks ago. He was like a legend, right? Because he, he created Dragon Ball Z, which is huge, and mm -hmm. then like a bunch of other super popular ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's well known. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, um, di didactic's been... Oh, it's hard to explain this semester. So uh, I'm in my first year, uh, second semester of my first year, and it's been going well. I um, pretty much got straight A's the first semester. Um, Woo! <laughs> a couple like A minuses, but I'm going to count that. I'm going to count that because I was like less than a percent away from that flat A. But um, I count it. <laughs> thank you. But um, yeah, so this second semester has definitely been challenging in a different way. It, it so my first semester, it was a lot of like just head in the books kind of stuff. And I, it's kind of the same thing now, but a little bit more clinically related. Uh, we've had like some pretty cool classes like EKG. I like that one a lot. I'm doing real well in that one. Uh, sonography, that one just ended. Uh, that one was really fun. Uh, we have a class called Clinical Lab where we're learning about like, like lab values and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And like different managements and like what labs to order. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, more hands-on uh, classes with regards to the didactic year. So, it's been, I'd say, more fun, but I definitely feel like I'm still not getting a lot of sleep. <laughs> nah, you're, you're not going to get sleep until school's over. Yeah, I kind of I kind of got that from uh, <laughs> experiencing this, this easier semester, because a lot of our second years kind of prefaced it with... Right. Uh, Oh yeah, the second year's uh, second semester is a, a lot easier. It's like you know, funner classes, and I'm like, True. they're fun, but I'm still like, I'm still studying a lot for it. <laughs> well, it's easier because you're used to the pace, and it's just like not new to you anymore. And it's easier because it's yeah, like you said, it's more fun stuff. It's not like biochemistry and this and that. It's like it's actual stuff that's clinical, you know. And if you like medicine, mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. I I think my one of my favorite classes is uh it's called spa uh, or skills of patient assessment so we're kind of doing like physical exams mm -hmm. and like just really applying like what we learned last semester into like different uh you know how you perform a physical exam yep there you go ba is that Bates it's Bates it's oh uh, <laughs> yep I I I read every single page and it's uh it's pretty killer <laughs> yep Bates guide to physical exam and all the quizlets that come with it this is uh this definitely got me through physical diagnosis. It um that's a great book. And yeah, there's a lot of videos online too where they mm -hmm. perform the actual exam. So that's been pretty yeah. helpful. Uh, it's I'm actually on... it's amazing how well that one's written. Because I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of times you read the book and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one, I don't understand a lot of this stuff, or I don't like the way it's presented, or it's just not clear. Bates, like literally mm -hmm. every topic I feel like is presented very, very well, and it gives you exactly what you need without anything more. So I actually really appreciate Bates. There's a there's a couple like parts where I'm just kind of confused because they'll like mm -hmm. try to over explain the maneuver. Like for example, yeah. uh, um, just like just like flexing the arm, like they'll explain it in like the most like like specific way where they're, they're like, mm -hmm. okay, you gotta hold like like five inches from here and two centimeters from here, and uh, palms have to be like supine. 
Uh, and you get to ask the patient, like, and like things like that. And I'm just like, oh, God, it's so specific. And they just want me to do that. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I don't know. You don't want it to mess it up because people will mess everything up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome because there's anatomy review and then they tell mm -hmm. you what you're looking for and how to do the exam. And those are like the main, the main things. And you know, actually it's all mm -hmm. tying into what I learned in, an, uh, in anatomy last year. And like, so some of the things like we're learning in pathophysiology, like the pathology of things, like why we palpate or why we auscultate, like things like that. Mm -hmm. Actually, you brought up a really good point that I think, I can't remember who made it. I think this was a, a medical student I interviewed whose interview I haven't edited or posted yet because it's going to be a lot of editing, uh, but mm -hmm. I will, it's coming soon. But I think she said she became an EMT and for the first time ever in EMT school is when she actually enjoyed school because she felt like it was something that's actually applicable to what she's going to do, not just like learning for the sake of learning, right? Mm -hmm. So second year of PA school, or for you, like second semester, I guess, is a lot like that. You actually learn stuff you're actually going to do. So it's actually, it's cool. It's kind of like the silver lining on all the work and all the sleepless mm -hmm. nights, right? Oh, yeah. Especially like tying in things to uh, my old job, like EKG and mm -hmm. clinical lab. Like I'm, I understand like why we ordered like certain mm -hmm. labs. And like, now I know how to read EKG. So I'm like, oh, now, like, that's what that doctor was talking about. Like, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, like things like that. And I'm just like, oh, it, mm -hmm. this is so interesting. Like, granted, I'm tired. I'm still not getting enough sleep, but it's right. definitely more fun than, you know, redoing anatomy and in, uh, in micro and all that again. Yeah. It's cool stuff to know. It's really cool. Like, you don't appreciate the process of it going into your brain, but it's cool to like know this stuff that you heard like a doctor say. And you heard like, hey, what, what the heck even is that? I don't know. And I'm too tired to look it up. Now you're learning it. And you're like, mm -hmm. oh, sweet. Now I know this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember perfect example. So, you know, like AFib, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Irregularly, irregular heart. Yep. The atria is just doing whatever it wants to do. And it's just like not getting through the ventricle consistently and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I was a scribe back in the day, one of the doctors said atrial flutter. And it was mm -hmm. the first time I heard that. And I was like, I think he means AFib, but I'll write it down. Maybe there's like different ways of saying it. And then sure enough, in EKG class, we like learn like, no, A flutter is a totally different rhythm. Yeah. The sawtooth. When I learned that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. The sawtooth pattern. <laughs> and I remember learning that and like, it was just so gratifying because it's like, wait a minute. No, he, that was a different thing. And this thing that I thought was so wrong and now I know better. It's just, it's so gratifying to learn medicine. It's just, it's really cool. It's cool to know. It. It's cool mm -hmm. to learn it. Or like when I when I was an ED tech, I I, have, I mm -hmm. had the same almost like a similar experience. I would like look at EKGs, and when they don't look like you know like your normal like nice P wave, QRS, and T wave, mm -hmm. um, where like it would like like someone would be like throwing PVCs, right? But sometimes that's like normal depending on you know the it patient. <laughs> yeah. So when I would see that as a tech, I'm like, I would show it to the doctor, and he'd be like, Oh yeah, it's fine. <laughs> like, just, what what is that big thing? <laughs> you 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 just wait you just wait until you have to be the one making that call and like freaking out and mm -hmm. then finding out it's fine. And then the next time it happens, you're like, no, it's fine. And people are like, <laughs> are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cool. Like the more you learn and sometimes just from experience, it's just, it's cool to know more. You know, we also had a very, very interesting class uh, related to our EKG class. Um, mm -hmm. It was called EKG Sim or uh, short for simulation. So mm -hmm. we kind of got to uh, be in this like sim lab where there's like a mechanical doll. Um, mm -hmm. We've had one of our okay. professors behind like a one-sided mirror or window. And she was kind of speaking to us through the doll and we were asking it questions, history, like why they came in, you know, uh, wow. alleviating um, uh, things that alleviate the, uh, the symptoms, things that make it worse. And Wait a minute. The yeah. doll was talking? Yeah, the doll was, well, it was, the doll was talk, talking through a, our professor was um, speaking into a mic in like the control room and it was speaking through the doll. Uh, they were speaking through the, through the doll. I don't like that. It, it was, it was freaky. I thought it was all like automated responses by the robot until I realized like, wow, like these responses are quite complicated. I don't think this is like AI or anything <laughs> Like, I'm pretty, no, yeah, like so it was like someone in, in, in the room over speaking into a microphone that it, it was being conveyed through the doll. I that creeps me the crap out. It was it was it was super fun. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, we even got to simulate like a code and that was really fun. Like the person was in like 
was going was going into Torsades, and then all of a sudden, uh, VTAC. Um, Wait, did the did the doll look like this? <laughs> um, no, I mean it, it looks like a mannequin, like almost like a, like the normal mannequins, but it was so cool, like it it like it had pulse, it had carotid pulses, it had pedal pulses, it had. I bet pulses. you this doll has no pulses whatsoever. That doll well, doesn't have a pulse when it's haunted. <laughs> no, this doll definitely doesn't have pulses, and it's freaking me <laughs> the f out. Like you, you tell me, talking doll, I'm out. I'm like, all right, I'll choose a different program. How about mannequin? Talking mannequin. Thank you. Don't yeah, don't don't use the word talking doll because then like I think this. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think when I think talking doll. That's so creepy. <laughs> Did I say doll? <laughs> you said doll. Like, okay, I meant mannequin. <laughs> How dare you? Wait, why am I back in in this enchanted forest thing? Oh, that's right, because now I'm trying to go back to to mm. this. <laughs> okay. Anyway, speaking of which, and also mine's it's a bit of a lag, so sorry. Um, no, that's okay. Okay, so thank you for crawling out of your study cave, Elijah, and for joining the land of the living away <laughs> from the land of Annabelle and joining me in this enchanted forest that you see on the screen and telling me about your first year PA school experience. So basically what you said is you're still very tired, you're not sleeping much, but it's more fun. Yeah, no no sleep, okay. but it's bearable because it's fun. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you're, okay. uh, what, what's the I, I like to tell my classmates, just like getting used to the abuse. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> kind of. It's necessary abuse. Yeah, necessary abuse. Fun abuse. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make it any less abusive, but it's, <laughs> it's necessary abuse. Just plug my laptop in. Okay, so, I mean, you're still surviving. You're still there, mm -hmm. right? You haven't failed out. Have you failed no. a single exam? No. I Not mean, one. The worst I got was probably a C, but I still got an A in that class. Um, but no, nice. I, yeah, my lowest grade in an exam was a C. Um, I don't I don't know. I haven't failed yet. I feel like it's because every time I study, I think, like, this is the only time I'm going to have to study for this one test. I want to do the best mm -hmm. I can for this test. And then move on with my life. Yeah. And I get what I get. I mean, I, I can't I can't always get A's. I mean, I'm getting like some tests I'll get like A pluses, some I'll get like B minuses, you know, it just kind of depends on mm -hmm. how much I actually like the subject. Yeah. It's like Yeah. As long as you're not constantly hanging around like on the edge, like constantly getting B minuses, then you're pretty stress free. You're just like, all right, I know I'll probably do well enough on the next one. You know, you're like, you're not freaking out the whole time. You're just like, okay, I can do this, right? But just like some words of reassurance for like those going into PA school or like even those in PA school, like once you get mm -hmm. to like the clinically applicable stuff, like like I said earlier, like EKG and Clin Lab, like mm -hmm. I noticed like the, the class average like shot way up. It was probably like a mid-B. Really? Yeah, mid-B for all the classes last semester during like the really like didactic heavy courses. And mm -hmm. Now that we're doing more hands-on things, like everyone's grades is like, like I think we all average like a low to mid A in most of our classes, and it's not easy. Oh wow! Yeah, these aren't easy classes. Like they're still hard. That's awesome. So nobody's like on the verge of uh, of failing or nothing. Like everyone's pretty strong. N not that I know of. I I have seen a couple sure. of low grades because you can see the whole like uh, yeah. grade scale and see who's the, who's got the highest, the average, and the lowest. But no one. Mm -hmm no one consistently like failing you know exams like we've all been pretty right. much been having high averages that's so i remember that like as soon as uh the test is done and everyone submitted you're like constantly hitting refresh like all right let me see the high the average and the low and then see what i got <laughs> yeah every and then like as long as it's not the low then you're like happy as long as it's like above average even by one point you're stoked and then like the one time a year that you get to be the high grade you're like woo yes that was that was me during finals. I absolutely crushed last semester's finals, and I I think one test, and it was the hardest class we had. Uh, uh -huh. Um, I I got the highest. I think I got like a ninety six percent or ninety seven. And it was a nice. hard exam. I I think that was the highest. I was like at the top of the bar, and I was like, oh, I did it. I'm that guy. Yeah. <laughs> right? You never thought you'd be that guy, right? Yeah. I always yeah, hated like, the people up there. I'm like, oh god, look at nerds. Right. <laughs> And it like it doesn't happen all the time, I'm assuming, but like you yeah. get like you set the curve one time and that's memorable. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember that. That was the coolest feeling ever. I only did it once. I only did it once. <laughs> same um, so far, same. <laughs> yeah. I tell the story a billion times, so I'm not gonna tell it, but like basically there was like very TLDR version 
our anatomy mm -hmm. class was taught by just the sweetest human being ever. I forgot her name, Dr. Stearns, I think, mm -hmm. who's like literally like a living encyclopedia. Like she can zoom in in her mind to like the nano whatever uh, like scale of something like a cell and she can go mm -hmm. all the way back out to the whole body. She's like brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. but so she's awesome, but not super communicative. So basically it took me a half a semester to figure out that most of the study material was in this like Microsoft word document that she just uh -huh. like didn't even tell us about, but that happens to be like in the folder on the, on the blackboard or something. Mm -hmm. So once I discovered this document, I was like, wait a minute, this is where all this stuff is like that I'm supposed <laughs> to be studying like what? And so I started studying the absolute crap out of it. And the first time, like I studied every word I could basically recite it. And I got like a 98 on that one. And everyone was like freaking out because there was so much information. And I was like, ah, peasants. And then sure enough, like <laughs> I let off after that because like you can't, that's not sustainable. You, mm -hmm. you can't study that much for every test. It's just not possible. Oh, but yeah. The one uh, time, cold. the one time I actually had all the information and took all the time possible to study it and like had it. It was like, dude, yeah. This that feels, feels nice. good, huh? <laughs> and never again. Like you don't have that much time to study for every test. It's a high but, that you only experience yeah. like the first like hour after you get that those exam results, um, and then and then one by the time the next exam comes up, you're like, oh god, now I gotta study hard again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like all right, th this this was nice, but yeah, it's, it's not not repeatable. I even remember someone saying like, who the hell got a ninety eight? And I just like turned my laptop around. That was nice. <laughs> Um, uh, so with regards once. to like, I guess just moving forward a little bit with the first, uh, my second yeah. semester of didactic, <laughs> I think just some things that I've stuck with me since the first semester is I kind of have kept the same, almost kind of similar, even though it's like more hands-on kind of similar study habits. And that's mm. just going directly by like what slides the professors are giving me. Cause that's exactly the material material you're getting tested on. So I mm -hmm. like last semester, I just kept reading, reading, reading the slides. And that's worked for me. That's worked for like a couple of the people that, you know, I, I talked to about when we uh, study for exams. And so far, it's been going well. I mean, but obviously, besides the fact of like physical exam where, where you have to be hands on, for the mm -hmm. most part, everything for me has just been, okay, I'll read it and just try to memorize it there on the spot. And that's been working for me. And now my like memory palace is like, it's so it's so big now like compared to what it was before did you say memory palace yeah i think that's like a it's like a concept where it's like uh almost like a mind map like uh like it's hard to explain it but in my mind like if i read a certain slide or if i remember something from anatomy before like it's like certain like visual things like mm -hmm. have you watched the good doctor where you kind of like yeah but like it, it's almost like that but not as vivid obviously i, I don't yeah. have imagination like that but um it's kind of like that where i'm just like sometimes you'll see mm -hmm. like my hands like because i'm trying to connect the dots in my mind mm -hmm. it was weird super weird i I, I didn't know i had this <laughs> do you know dr jubal his, yeah. Uh, his... yeah 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 med school med, med school insiders med school insiders yeah. Yeah. He he's nuts. He's like he got into like plastic surgery residency, which is like the craziest residency to get into. And then he decided mm -hmm. he didn't want to be a doctor anymore because he like founded some company. He He's nuts. Super brilliant. But I think he talks about that. He like I don't know if he calls it the memory palace, but he says he like goes into like a certain room and then like imagines details in that room and then like puts whatever he's learning in there somehow. I, I don't know how it works for him, but something like that. Concept. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. I think you're a very visual person, if that's how you memorize. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I can memorize, like, like we had an exam today. Like, there's a certain slide with a question and an answer on it. And I couldn't tell you, like, where on that slide that answer was. Like, things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, I don't But then, I like, think... it's gone. Like, I will, like, I won't know it years from now. Unless it's, like, an important concept. Like, right. I'm not going to retain it. But this is just for, like, little details. Like, for, like, what's called level one questions. So, basically, just mm -hmm. route memorization just like okay you, it's on the slide just know it that's yeah. what i mainly use that for that's i feel like a, a majority of the test sometimes oh okay anyway yeah that, that, that's cool <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm just trying to think should we stay on the the study skills uh topic or do we want to get to everything else we want to talk about i think we could probably we can move on yeah we could probably move on uh if you guys want we can make a separate like study skills 
dedicated video. I've got plenty of them on the channel, but if you guys want me and Elijah to make one, you know, put that in the comments. We'll be happy to to try to make some actual like step by step type study stuff. But if we talk about it now, this will be this will be ours. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but no, I'm very glad your study skills are working. You're still there. The school uh, kind of took a chance on you, right? Because you were not a non traditional applicant, just like me. Mm -hmm. And you're thriving. So obviously Rutgers knows what they're doing with their admissions, uh, their admissions process. So I actually wanted to chat about that really quickly because I feel like both colleges we went to, Rutgers and Lemoyne, they have a very holistic application review uh, process. They don't just go straight by like GPA or GRE or whatever. They really look at every applicant. So I, I kind of wanted to ask you about that because ours, it's, it's uh, it seems to be immediately noticeable the minute you apply through CASPA because there's a there's a separate supplemental question that asks mm -hmm. if you don't meet the 3.2 minimum GPA like can you you know can you tell us more about that elaborate on that you know oh. why did you... so immediately I was like oh this is a lot different than the other programs I've been applying to because. They're actually like there's a supplemental where I can explain myself and my situation. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you had that, but for me, that's that's where I immediately immediately knew like Rutgers was like really a holistic, you know, review. Like they really mm -hmm. practice what they preached. Um, yeah. And, you know, I didn't have the best grades, but I had the clinical experience and, and, and the years of like remaking my grades so they kind of mm -hmm. looked at me as a whole applicant versus like you know a statistic or like just another student who gets 4.0s and you know they right. took a chance on me got on the wait list got in but yeah but what, what was your experience with uh, uh des moines uh i'm actually really interested in that because so a video i just kind of rehashed from years ago yeah. when i interviewed the dean of admissions at my college that i went to for pa school uh, she said that they're very holistic and they look at every single application like one by one. And if they see low grades, they go digging into the application for why. Whereas another dean I had interviewed said, no, we basically take 3.3 and we cut off everyone below unless mm -hmm. for whatever reason we know that they you know, should be considered. So I'm not sure if they actually mean that, if they actually do that. But it's really cool that Rutgers actually asked like an actual question for that. Mm -hmm. so that's that's very impressive my situation wasn't like that um so i guess you kind of have to decide am i going to explain my low grades in my in my uh essay or are they even going to read my essay all of that stuff so i don't know in my own case uh there was no supplemental for lemoyne they don't have one uh or at least they didn't at the time but my case i was talking to the dean of admissions for years at that point so she knew me and she knew mm -hmm. my situation and she knew i was in post back because she told me to go do one so like they already knew to put my application aside. That's why I strongly advise everyone to like talk to admissions personally, get a personal relationship. It might take a year or two, but then they'll kind of know your name. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas it looks like Rutgers is just straight up, just holistic, which is awesome. Which I, I think that essay that having that prompt on CASPA really yes. is what got me in because they're, first of all, yeah, they're, they're, they're they'll look at it holistically, but them like focusing mm -hmm. on, the why like why this happened then they were able to like dig in and delve like you said delve into my applications and see like oh that this is why and like he's doing fine now mm -hmm. so yeah why not i guess take a chance on them that makes sense that makes sense and i really appreciate schools that do that because it's really a lot harder for them you know let's say a school gets 2000 applicants which is probably on the low side yeah. they have to read all their personal statements go very detailed into all their applications Instead of being like, all right, 3.5 and above, let's take these 200 people and only choose from them. You know, mm -hmm. so they're making it really hard for themselves to just like find that diamond in the rough. Did you, um, so for your school, you said they, it, they were the school that had a cutoff or did not have like a, a hard cutoff? Yes and no. So I interviewed the director of admissions twice, two different directors. One told me, like it's not on their website, but they have like a soft cutoff. Like they just, it's just what they practice themselves. Mm -hmm. And the other one said, no, we don't cut anyone off. We look at every single application. So I don't know what the official policy is. I don't know if they vary year by year. I don't know what they actually do, but I've heard both that they do cut off at a certain GPA or that they don't. Okay. That's interesting. Cause now I'm curious as to how like the different PA programs, the admissions committees, like, really take a look at these applications because just right. 
for transparency's sake, I mean, I've talked about this with you before, Boris. My GPA was like a 2.3. I probably have the lowest GPA coming into PA school. Mm -hmm. And, like, I still, like, don't know how I got it. Obviously, I'm doing well. But, and you know, mm -hmm. I've way proven that GPA, overproven that GPA. But I'm mm -hmm. wondering, like, does, like, is it just by chance? Like, the person who happens to be screening my application just, like, loved my story and then really just vouched for me? Like, is that what happened? Mm -hmm. Or, like... Like mm -hmm. you said, like where they're like soft cutoffs, and you know, if I apply to a school with like soft cutoffs, which probably happened to me in my application cycle, like they just completely like threw away my application. I would love it if you'd ask, if you go to admissions and be like, guys, why'd mm -hmm. you let me in? I'm just curious. You know, at first, I, I asked this my first semester, and uh, <laughs> one, one of them told me that, oh, it's because, you know, you know, there's a reason. And then I, I never really delved right. deeper than that. But now that I know a, a couple of the faculty more and mm -hmm. who's on ad, ad comms, uh, I, I, I think I do want to try to delve into that because I actually want to be more involved in that interview process uh, for applicants uh, by the time I'm a second or third year and try to help out with those mm -hmm. interviews and actually be one of the people interviewing the incoming students. Uh, definitely talk to the people in charge and make them very aware that you're doing this because they may not want you involved in the interview process. Right. Because then you might be biased. Oh, okay. You know, or like not even that it would happen, but there is a chance or even the appearance of a chance mm -hmm. that someone pays you to edit their essay and do a mock interview. And then you're the one interviewing them that you can't have that. Right. Right. Constantly. So I've actually, I had to excuse myself from Lemoyne's process because of what I do about, you know, this. Um, and I wasn't going to stop doing this. So like, you know, you probably, you, and since you also do this, you probably can't uh, be actually formally mm -hmm. involved. Or you could just say, hey, I I edited essays and did mock interviews for a time. I'm done doing that now. I want to be involved. And you could do that too. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll be sure to uh, talk to my advisor about it because uh, yeah, he, mm -hmm. he always knows like what to, what to do with regards to situations like these. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it would be really cool to be involved with the process. Uh, for me personally, like I got to keep this brand going for you. If mm -hmm. you take a six month hiatus or whatever, cool. You know what I mean? So you're totally mm -hmm. poised to be able to do that. And they just come back with like <laughs> mind blowing <More>. knowledge. <laughs> yeah. More experience. Yeah. I mean, because... different interviewers have different, different styles and techniques. He was very like rigid. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, there was another one on that same panel who was very uh, receptive to my story. You know, everyone just kind of has a different style of interview. Yeah. That's why I always tell people when they're interviewing, like, you can't do the same thing for every single person, right? Yeah. Like, I tell people to definitely be personal. Don't be super stiff and professional. However, if your interviewer is super stiff and professional, keep that. If your interviewer is like, I don't know, for lack of a better term, like a mom who's like super warm and open and just like can't wait to actually have a conversation, have that conversation and they'll be happy about it. But the guy who's like stiff and what like wants to be formal and business like stay stiff and business like because if you're not, they're not going to like it, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to kind of calibrate. But yeah, just kind of tying this back to like the holistic um, uh, admissions yes. uh, kind of topic we were talking about. Um I mean, it, 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 it is a thing. I mean, me and Boris are examples here. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a second year in my um, from my school. Uh, so he's currently in rotations now. And he, yeah, he had a pretty amazing story too. Uh, I'm hoping Boris can get him on mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. talk, to, talk to you guys about his story. Because, you know, just like a little brief intro, uh, I won't say his name. He'll, he'll introduce himself. But basically he, Got into pay school a couple of years ago. I don't know how long ago, um, you mm -hmm. know, due to um, unforeseen circumstances, had to drop out and then, you know, decided to go back to pay school. And, you know, it was Rutgers that really gave him that second chance, you know, to say, like, all right, here, prove yourself, like, you know, try to make it through mm -hmm. our program. And you, he, he's here. He's in in, di uh, in clinical rotations now and he killed it during his didactic. So yeah. there's really admissions uh, processes out there that really look at uh, your application holistically mm -hmm. um, and we'll see you more than just what your GPA was. Um, you know, they'll see like your extracurriculars, they'll see like your PCE, your shadowing, mm -hmm. they'll see you as a whole, you know, versus just yeah. like we talked about earlier, GPA. That's just, that's such a testament to Rutgers ability to pick out that diamond in the rough 
because if they had just seen Elijah's GPA, they would have been like, next. But they picked him out, and sure enough, here he is doing very, very well, having like not failed a single exam, just killing it. And I think you, you have some sort of a leadership position in your class too. Is that right? No, no I'm, I'm, I'm sort of just seen as the funny guy. I just make a lot of jokes. <laughs> um, I, my classmates know I, if I make these videos with you. That's like kind of like my, like, I guess reputation. And that like, I, you know, I, I say jokes a lot just to like alleviate the mood, but no, I, I don't have a, a leadership position besides. Wait, um, is it a good reputation or how do people feel about that? Oh, I mean, I, I feel like I make people laugh. <laughs> no, not your jokes. The fact that you do this. Oh, oh, um, they thought it was cool. They were like, oh, a celebrity. And I'm like, no, I'm bored. Yeah. it's Boris's channel. I'm just here for a good time. <laughs> I mean, some of our stuff probably has a few hundred to a few thousand views. Yeah, Enough no, people that's, know that's, about it. That, that That's actually pretty, thinking about the niche and the community of like mm -hmm. the, P, the PAs, like that, I mm -hmm. think that's pretty big way more people know about this and see it than really let on mm -hmm. like you can see the view count on one video there's 350 videos you mm -hmm. know so and like so many people email me not to even ask for help but they're like hey by the way i chose lemoyne because of you and i was <laughs> like who even are you like i didn't help you i didn't do your essay i we've never talked and it's one of the thousands and thousands of people that have seen our videos that like made decisions based on them so like even this tiny little channel like it's it's got a big reach in this small community. Oh yeah, I mean it, it's pretty amazing. You know, like I feel like it's such a blessing even to just talk to you about these things. Because mm -hmm. for me, when I was a pre PA, I loved listening to stuff like this. I would just have it running in the background while I'm like, likewise, washing dishes, doing laundry. Like I love stuff <laughs> like this. <laughs> Literally, Granted, I like, don't have time anymore, but <laughs> I, I did love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you like when you do have a minute to like to yourself. That's kind of when you just like put it on and, you know, you just feel better. Uh, just kind of having like a community of people that kind of understand, even if you don't so, like, talk to them. It's just like conversations like these. It's like mm -hmm. conversations with your peers, you know. Uh, what I'm trying to do right now, I know you can't see it on the screen, is I'm trying to see how many times this channel has been viewed. YouTube keeps messing with it. Okay, yeah, there it is. 303,000 views. That is a lot of people. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know if that counts, like, if people watch the same video more than once, but it's, so it's not, like, that many people, because it's 2,000 subs, and then however many people, whatever, viewed it, but mm -hmm. total number of views on this channel, 303,000. So, I mean, as many, yeah, what, what's that? That's a big number. That is a big number. So, a lot of people, you know, especially in this tiny little community, have seen what we talk about. Uh, so, that's kind of cool that you're known for that in your program. Uh, but anyway, so I think what we were talking about was how uh, some schools are just like more numbers based GPA only. And like, if you have a low GPA, just forget about it. But mm -hmm. a lot of programs like the ones that both you and I went to are very holistic. They look at every single individual or at least a lot of individuals. So if you happen to have a low GPA or something, there is hope for you. It is possible in this lifetime. You're mm -hmm. kind of starting behind the starting line. You have a little bit more probably work to do than someone who's like always had perfect grades but like it is possible i've been through it you know i'm in my third year of practice now elijah's currently doing great in his program it's possible okay so just just know that guys it's possible <laughs> yeah did we want to move uh, on to the to, uh the personal statement now i'd like to uh stream keeps freezing so i'm wondering if we even can realistically or if i'll have to just restart my computer and we can or we can just, try it a second we can just time. Do, it a, do it another day if you want because i'm i'm actually a little bit more free I, I mean i don't know how free you are i remember you talking to me about your situation but yeah but yeah i mean i feel like we hit a couple of good things just so like yeah for you to edit later to make this like <laughs> an hour long for you to edit and you know you're busy with your work and having well <laughs> the good thing about like not so not everybody's like good at this talking on camera and all of that and some people like to make gaffes and like things that they wish they wouldn't have said or i wish they wouldn't have said and i have to go back and edit things mm. the easy thing with you and i think me now that i've finally gotten better at talking on camera which took like a year uh is there's no editing really especially with Streamyard. there's really no adjusting no editing you just put it into you know the youtube editor and that's it mm -hmm. i'm done 
So this is actually very nice to do. Um, I mean, I love the layout too. Like I, after downloading it, I was like, oh, this is way nicer than Zoom. Yeah, StreamYard is sweet. It's, uh, I mean, having not just the basic version is a little expensive, but it's totally worth it. Yeah, uh, StreamYard just sponsor you. Stop putting that out there. Oh, I wish. StreamYard got <laughs> way bigger fish to, uh, to, to sponsor than me. Uh, but also, Elijah said, kind of like quietly under his breath, your situation, don't worry, guys, I'm fine. I'm just in the middle of handling three big oh, yeah. things. One, a move to a different state. Two, a switching to a different job in that different state. And three, buying a house in that different state, which is depending on my job, which is depending on me getting a license in that state, which is so stressful I can't even think. Uh, because all of them have paperwork and you depend on other people to do that paperwork. But that's being an adult and a professional and a licensed professional and a homeowner. So, you know, uh, it, it's life. Life is fun. But it's going to be nice in like six months when I'm sitting in my sick new house doing this new job that I hope I'll enjoy in this nice new city that I can't wait to live in. It's it's going to be nice. But like everything else that's nice, you do have to kind of fight for it. So I'm in the fighting stage of this particular nice thing. Yeah, it's rough in the beginning, man, but it'll be worth it. Yeah, I'm excited. I can't you. wait. Thanks, man. I, I really can't wait. Uh, I'm moving to Raleigh, North Carolina. Just first time I told anyone out in the YouTube space here. Uh, but yeah, I'm moving to Raleigh. I can't wait. He's moving away from me, even further away. <laughs> Aren't you from California? Yeah, I mean, I'm in Jersey right now. I mean, yeah, I know. When I was uh, <laughs> when I was in New York, I was like, oh shoot, I should visit visit Elijah in Jersey. And now I'm moving like way far away from Jersey. Come on, man! Like you gotta hit me up. <laughs> There's nothing to do in Jersey. I would have probably just told you, yeah, sorry, man, I'm studying. Good luck. <laughs> Um, you would not. You would totally take time for me. <laughs> I would. Uh, we, I mean, well, we still got to meet up sometime, man. I, I hope we will. We will sooner or later. Maybe you can do a rotation or something with urgent care with me down there in, in Raleigh. <laughs> and we'll just have a great old time. <laughs> I mean, that would be kind of sweet. You could do a rotation at my new company if they'll let me. And then you could obviously stay at my house. It's a freaking four bedroom with plenty of space. So it's fine. And then we would just uh, go to go to work together. <laughs> that that fixes, solves everything for me. <laughs> kind of, honestly. I don't know. It's this is a very big hypothetical, but it would be cool to like have Elijah as my rotation student. Well, I still have a year until then, so like well, less than a year now, less than a year. Yeah, and I don't even know what they would count that because it wouldn't be emergency medicine. It might be closer to primary care, but not really. So I don't know. And I, don't, I wouldn't want you to waste your elective on urgent care because you don't want to do urgent care. Uh, yeah, so I don't I really I'm, know what I'm they would do. it on like trauma and critical care. I think we get two electives. Yeah. I don't know. See, like whenever you do start picking your rotations, because they do encourage you to make your own because that's one less that they have to place you in. Mm -hmm. uh, so if your school does that, I, I know ours did. Uh, if they would count urgent care as primary care, because we kind of see a lot of the same stuff mm -hmm. uh, just on a more accelerated basis. I don't know. That would be cool. Which I'm already like used to like fast paced, like work environments like that. So I feel like that would be... That'd be good. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, I I'll, I'll talk to them because I don't have my uh, clinical advisor yet. But as soon mm -hmm. as I do, I will. I will reach oh, out. Yeah. To them. Yeah. Do that, and then of course I'm going to get established at my new job and be like, hey, by the way, I, can I take a rotation student? And then it will be up to them because <laughs> it's a big company. They might just be like, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we don't do that here. <laughs> I mean, it's it's up to whatever the company wants, and they obviously want productivity. So I don't know if they would want me to spend time right. on that because a, stu a student would obviously obviously slow like the flow of traffic. Yes and no. It depends on how well you use the student because the student could be kind of like a medical assistant type person, and they mm -hmm. could like help with a lot of things. It can even, you know what I mean? Like, so it could, it could be good. Which uh, I, I feel like I have so much hands-on experience in the ED. I feel like I'd be a great MA for you. <laughs> I think so. You know, if we happen to be shorthanded that day or whatever, it's like, hey, my rotation student can do some of this while I'm also mm -hmm. teaching them other stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it depends. But very, uh, very what do you call it tentative or very like possibly yeah. in the future kind of a thing, but it would be really sweet to have Elijah for like two months, stay at my house and like be my rotation student. <laughs> That'd be so That'd be awesome. Sick. Well, and it would be free for you. Obviously you wouldn't have to like pay for lodging. Or I know. That'd be so nice. <laughs> I mean, it's a four bedroom house. Move your wife and your kid there too. I don't care. Like they can all come. There's plenty of space. Okay. So that depends but... on if my wife's in med school. So she's applying this cycle. Oh man. Good luck. Yeah, I think she's gonna do it. She's smarter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, she's way, yeah, she was the smart one. So that's the secret yeah. to his good marriage. There, he admits that. <laughs> that's yeah, the that's, secret. 
That's going to be a power couple right there, man. That's uh, that's hard to pull off. You're going to have to let us know. Maybe bring her on and let us know how that works. Oh yeah, she um, she's like, she's the one that holds down everything. Like the success here that you see here, it's the wife, the wife and the kiddo. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, topic for a different day. I think that would be more appropriate once she's already in med school or like already practicing. Maybe. I'll have her talk to you when she gets in. We could do that. And I'm just thinking more along the, like the relationship lines would be just because people are always interested in that. Uh, mm -hmm. I found. OK, tell me this is probably the last thing we should talk about. Yeah. Uh, unless, of course, you have time. But this is totally not what we planned on doing. We planned on editing this one essay we have mm -hmm. uh, kind of live. But my computer is being so frozen and glitchy, mm -hmm. which I don't understand because it's a MacBook Pro from like 2019. I don't know why it's already like old, but I think I need a new one. Apparently, That's Apple saying like you need to buy more product. <laughs> Apple is making me angry lately. They're getting sued by something and now their stock is down. And I just lost a bunch of money from them. But anyway, okay, that, that doesn't matter. <laughs> what does matter is buy low, sell high. But also what matters is relationships. Uh, and that is like, tell me if you've noticed the same thing. So most of your class is probably female, right? Uh, I'd say 80 and 85%. Yeah. Yeah. The vast majority of PAs and especially PA students, whatever, are female. Mm -hmm. uh and they're almost all like caucasian 25 ish or below females like oh yeah yeah across yeah, the board is, yeah that age is right around there we're pretty diverse we've got a mm -hmm. good mix of a, a lot i think oh for real yeah uh yeah at the city wise okay because a lot of pa schools have that like on their website like yeah we value diversity we want like everyone you know like from different socioeconomic and veterans and and this and that and then you look mm -hmm. at their pictures and it's like is this a sorority like they're all blonde 24 year old females and it's it, like it, there's, a, there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot but i'd say we're pretty diverse for, for that's awesome <laughs> that's that's literally awesome for your program like that it's literally in the introduction to my book read the book get the, the book. book read the book all right <laughs> It's literally in the introduction to my book, why this book was written. And it's like, I, I just cite a bunch of stats on how there's like basically all of PA students are Caucasian females. And like, I'm oh. trying to like <laughs> give other people a chance. You know what I mean? Like veterans, people from other uh, races, from other socioeconomic statuses, like just, I want more diversity in medicine because it's good. Mm -hmm. You know, like not that you have to be the exact same race, gender and age as somebody uh to empathize with them but i'm also not saying it doesn't help like if someone happens to speak spanish and there's like a first generation immigrant from south america that speaks spanish only and is already scared because they're in this new country wouldn't they feel more comfortable with someone that speaks their language at the very least or maybe he's even from their neighborhood like there's a time and a place and like not everyone can like be the exact you know demographics of their patients but mm -hmm. more diversity in medicine specifically is helpful. It's like, it's an empathy profession. It's, it's helpful. It's not banking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah, I wish schools would take that more seriously. Uh, yeah. Rutgers that does a really good job. So I'm actually like <laughs> proud of, proud of that. Proud yeah. of our numbers and where our statistics lie. Mm -hmm. Literally Rutgers seems like a really awesome program. I'd love to talk to your people and see if we can like interview your Dean or something like, how do you guys do this? How are you guys so good at everything? Our director uh, would probably be super willing to talk to you. She's super nice. Love her. So now I need to talk to the guy that's taking a second chance. You already gave me his email. I'll follow up. Mm -hmm. You can, I mean, if you want to talk to your director, especially if you want to be on that, on that <laughs> interview, I'm sure people out in the YouTube space would love that. Yeah. You know? Dr. Yeah. Pofferman is, is super nice. You would love talking to her. <laughs> is it a female or a male? Yeah, she's female. Dr. Paul for men. I was like, oh, he, but wait a minute, man is in the last name. So now I don't know. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, talk to her. I'd, I'd absolutely love to have her on. Obviously she can screen the questions. I'm not going to throw her any zingers. Like I would just love to talk to her. Um, mm. But yeah, let's see if we can get her on. That'll be cool. But my whole point in bringing up the whole uh, female thing is like, so the majority of PAs and certainly PA students nowadays are young females some of them, you know, might be married or in serious relationships. Some of them are probably single. Uh, tell me if you've also noticed this phenomenon. The people that the ones are in serious relationships with, and then at like a year or two after graduation, you see them all getting married, which is like like clockwork. It's like this person was in a relationship the whole time through PA school. They did not break up. 
And then, all right, T minus 16 months until I see wedding photos. Boom. It just happens like that over and over again. And like, I see that. All you know the time. what? We have so few guys. Yeah. I think a couple of us are in relationships, at least three or four of us. And there's only like 10 of us. Yeah. Um, they're like, there's so few of us that yeah. I, I personally have not seen any relationships come to the surface yet i don't know if there is but uh, i i do know that phenomenon you're talking about where like you like you know you date you date your classmate and then you guys no no that's there. not what i'm talking about oh no 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 so the phenomenon i'm talking about is i notice like the ones that do stay in serious relationships and then end up getting married or just for like whatever just stay in their relationships mm -hmm. i've noticed that the female that's the pa the guy that she's with very frequently is like a blue collar type dude like a plumber or a carpenter or electrician mm -hmm. owns his own like driveway paving oh, business. You know what? That, that, that is so true. I think Have you noticed that. Yeah. Yes. So uh, one yeah. of uh, my classmates, her boyfriend's a cop. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like super like blue collar type. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're like super nice guys too. And I'm just like, whoa. Yeah. They're good people. Yeah. But it's just funny because it's like, cause I was talking about you and your, uh, you guys are married, right? Yes. You're, yeah. Right? We're married. Okay. Sorry. I, I forgot for a second. <laughs> I was just talking about you and your wife and like, you're, you're going to be a PA. She's going to be a doctor. And it's like this super power couple. And then I thought about how you don't see that. You usually see like someone who's in this, like very buttoned up, like white collar profession, like PA or doctor. And then they have like kind of more of a blue collar partner, uh, right. a partner. Yeah. Like I feel like, do you notice that? I, I do notice that. Um, I think, I, it's because me and my wife, we kind of had similar uh, aspirations when we met. I, I mm -hmm. think that's why. Like, we both initially wanted to be doctors. And, you know, we always knew that we wanted to strive for higher education and, like, higher um, scope of practice in medicine and, you know, more autonomy. So that's kind of why, I guess, people – Yeah, like, I, I understand what you say. Like, a lot of my classmates even call us the power couple, too. Yeah. I, I do notice a lot of, yeah, my female classmates and their, like, significant others or partners mm -hmm. are – yeah, like blue collar working people. And I did get a little bit of insight. And, you know, a couple, mm -hmm. you know, of my classmates say like, oh, yeah, it's because like, I wouldn't want a partner that's also in the medical field. That's like a, one reason that I've True. heard. But, True. I kind of yeah. would because it's nice to like have them understand. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if I necessarily want to be with a provider. That might be a bit of a budding heads type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really certain. But I can see why they would think that. Also, it could just be them logically justifying the fact that they just like this person and they don't know why. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just, it's funny. I think it's because they get to go home and like, right, you, you're, you've just been like, you've had a long day at work, you know, blood guts, mm -hmm. I don't know what, what the patients, um, coworkers, and then you go home and you just don't want to think about it. So that, I guess that's like the release that they need is like when they come home, it's like they don't talk mm -hmm. about medicine at all. But I'm the complete opposite. When 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 something cool happens at at my job, yeah. the first one I tell my wife when I get home. And whenever something cool happens at her job, mm -hmm. she's always telling me what's going on. You know, we kind of know like the little secrets of like what's going on in each other's job. Like, oh hey, like this doctor did this, or like oh this doctor just yelled at that person. <laughs> <laughs> like 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 things like that. Or like we would talk about like pathology and things like that. Like why why like why why did this doctor do this like or like why did they push push like a tpa for this patient like i don't understand and like we would like work things through together and i contribute that to my and you guys both enjoy that yeah yeah like we're so neurotic neurotic and how <laughs> we talk about like medicine because we're such uh -huh. i didn't realize it until now but like we're such nerds and like we yeah. love talking about medicine like i love hearing her passions about ob and like she's talking to me about hcg and like all the different like fertility like you know treatments because that's like kind of the realm she wants to go into and i'm i'm you... telling her i'm telling her like all the trauma stuff and all the er stuff because that's kind of my interest dude <laughs> you like have a heart of gold you have fun with that the less <laughs> i hear about ob the better i i thought it was interesting because she sounds passionate about it <laughs> no no which is awesome I, I love that she's passionate about it i just don't want to hear about ob i'm good <laughs> especially for my wife like holy crap I, I mean i don't have a, a wife i'm single but like if I happen to be married to anyone in the medical profession, I really wouldn't want her working in OB because I really don't want to hear about all that <laughs> at all. It just like takes the mystery away from me. For, I'm not going to even get into this, but like just anything related to OB whatsoever, even when I have to do it, it just wrecks 
anything in that department in my uh, my life. I just I hate it. So oh man, I don't know. I <laughs> I can't do it. I, I I just feel like it's the way she talks about it. And yeah, at first like I didn't know anything about OB, but like when she right. like explained to me these things, I'm like, oh shoot, you guys do that? <laughs> like that's intense. <laughs> like what? Like specifically? Like give me an example. Like um. Even like um, palpating the cervix, or like like for, or or in like, or like even doing pelvic exams and like even putting the speculum in at first, like when she would used to tell me about that, I was like, what? Like, what is that? Wait, <laughs> have like, you not had? Oh, you haven't done your rotations yet. Well, I yeah, not yet. I I oh. actually just had that physical, um, okay. like practice. Uh, we just did it on like like mannequins. The mannequins, yeah. So, yeah. There's Ooh. definitely there. Okay. Let me know before your OB rotation. Okay. And there's definitely a method to it where you're not traumatizing the poor person. Oh, you mean with the speculum? The speculum, yeah. Not to get like graphic out like the necessity the necessity to like avoid discomfort with the pelvic exam as much as possible and like what I've learned. Uh so okay, I'll just I'll go through it really quickly again. Now that you're in not that you're in your women's health rotation yet, but you will be, and I'll probably tell you this again when you are. Uh, but just having done tons and tons of pelvic exams in primary care and especially now in urgent care, you're constantly doing them SCD checks and all kinds of stuff. Uh, usually we have this like plastic speculum. So it's kind of more narrow on one side and more thick on the other side and it's got the little light and of course it has to open, you know, so that you can actually do the exam. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, the vagina is like a muscular organ, so you don't want to just stretch it really quickly or it'll spasm. And that would be very, very uncomfortable for the poor person who's already uncomfortable, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, so what you want to do is like, let's say this is the thick part because it opens like that. What you want to do is you want to turn it totally uh, 90 degrees and slowly advance it, the narrow part, because it, it like lines up with the opening, right? So you advance it that way. And once you're in, that's when you slowly, again, keyword slowly, turn it this way. And again, slowly, that's when you open it. Mm -hmm. You know, it clicks. So instead of like, like you want to like slowly advance, turn, and then click, 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 slow. Uh, and then you can do, you know, what you need to do the exam and the swabs and on, you know, the, if you're doing a pap, then do the pap and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But go in 90 degrees like that then slowly turn and very slowly open it uh, so just very like, gentle smooth smooth motions very gentle very smooth and always make sure you start with the narrow part and then like the wide part you know once you're already in and open slow and this is not a speculum this is a guitar capo just so it, looks like are, one. it looks like it. it looks enough to where i can make the point but this is a guitar capo i don't just like have a random speculum sitting around that would be very weird a uh, uh, quick question: How yes. do you hold it with your dominant or non-dominant hand? So I like to hold it with mm. my non-dominant because I feel like I'm ambidextrous, ambidextrous enough to be gentle and smooth. Because like mm -hmm. when you're grabbing like the the, the swab, the bottom, yeah, like I, I want it to be with my dominant hand. I think I I don't know. I can't even like place myself in the room. I want to say you're right. Like to place it, I'll kind of use both hands. You know, because I have more control yeah. with my dominant yeah, hand, initially, but then uh, just holding it in place and getting the swab, my medical assistant's usually on this side. So, yeah, then, that's when I'll use my right hand for the swab and uh, all of that. If you're doing a bimanual, obviously, you're using your dominant hand, mm -hmm. all that stuff. And bimanual, I'm not going to demonstrate here because it's totally inappropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, so I don't know how this conversation. So, oh, this conversation went from did you notice that one, most of your class, your physician assistant school class is female. Two, how the ones that are, are in serious relationships seem to be in relationships with blue collar type guys, like carpenters, cops, that kind of thing. And somehow we ended up talking about women's health rotations. Uh, but anyway, they're all good topics <laughs> to have. <laughs> we just, uh, we're just catching up on life, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And like you said, like when you're a pre PA or even in PA school, like this is like camaraderie. It's good stuff for people to listen to. But. Yeah, it's I gonna be we'll like the, you guys and like every other classmate. Like you guys will just go for like next, and that's just kind of how it is mm -hmm. and how you connect with your classmates. Literally, it's just it's how it is. Uh, <laughs> Mario actually said the same thing. He he's like, yeah, like I feel like if we were in the same class, we would have been like hanging out all the time, which probably. Uh, and he's he's got a lot going on. You know, when you start working as a PA, it's overwhelming. There's so much going on. 
especially that first year, you know, because you're learning. Mm -hmm. The first, yeah, a few months, especially, you're just like, how, how, how do I do this? This is impossible. Mm -hmm. And then you just kind of like, do you it. get it. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Like, I remember, I don't remember when, maybe like a couple months into my first job, because I used to like, I would get so overwhelmed when the patient actually came to see me because I didn't know what to do about all their like nine diagnoses because it was internal medicine. And I was like, wait, how am I supposed to manage this level of diabetes? What is this medication? What is its side effects? How am I supposed to do this? So what I would do was the night before, I'd go through all my patients for the next day and like pre-write their charts. And oh. then when I had a busy schedule, I had like 16 on, I was like, it would took me like four hours a night. And I was like, this is not sustainable. I got to quit. I can't do this. And then, you know, you just struggle through it. And then after a while, you're just like, all right, now I just know enough to like, just go in and know what I'm doing. And if I have to mm -hmm. look something up, I do, but it's, it's less, Yeah, you know, so it's less stressful, but it's when you're new, everything's stressful. Yeah. It's like that for everything, you know, starting mm -hmm. PA school, you know, starting rotations, starting mm -hmm. your first job, going to a new job, every, it's always going to be like that. Just adapting. Yeah. But what's gratifying is like, the more, you know, the more you can just like do it. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're not a new grad. And that's when companies and like offices are just like, no, please work for us. We don't have to train you like a new grad. Like you already can just work and just uh -huh. know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, we already know that you can just handle this instead mm -hmm. of like us having to hold your hand through everything. It's just like, you're so much more marketable after a couple of years of experience. It's crazy. It's good stuff. You'll get there. I'm, I'm excited, man. I, I'll I enjoy it. I know I'm like taking it fast, but I, I keep telling my classmates, like, I just want to start working. <laughs> you do and you, uh, i don't know be careful what you wish for <laughs> yeah let's get through the first year first. well yeah take advantage of where you're at right now where it's just like it's really hard and you're not making money and whatever but like at least not every single decision you make could potentially end your career because of a lawsuit right <laughs> it's like wait a minute did i check the interactions on this okay this is a level two why did i prescribe it uh shoot now i need to go tell them to stop taking this it's like you just there's a lot you know so being a student, yeah. tremendous responsibility and it's all you especially if you're in like a in a field like i am where you're solo provider there's no one there it's like you're making the decisions so it's like be careful what you wish for you know what i mean like enjoy having zero liability as a student i i hear that a lot too and that's yeah. something we can talk about in another video but i've, I've definitely mm -hmm. heard that a lot where it's like People who aren't in PA school miss PA school, and people in PA school want to already be back out there. <laughs> oh, I don't miss PA school at all. <laughs> I've heard a couple. I've heard a couple people. Seriously? Say, well, because the liability thing that you talked about. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But I mean, if you're smart about it and you actually take due diligence with people and you're not like trying to rush through things, which I mean, you have to if you're, you're working with a lot of people. But like, I don't know. If you're as careful... And as like detail oriented as I am, I feel like you're not as afraid of that. Mm -hmm. But it's it is always a risk. Just oof. you just and like know. especially after like the second semester of PA school and like learning like what labs to order and like diagnostics mm -hmm. tools. I'm just like man, some of these some of these like pathologies like all the symptoms are like the same. <laughs> it's like, the devil's in the that? details. Yeah, the devil it, is in the details, and it, sometimes. It, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, depending on what field of medicine you're in, but almost all of them, and especially something like urgent care, it's like, what is optimal and what might it be? And also practically, what can you do? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, practically, you can't really do much. You can refer, you can send them to the ER, but there's really not much else you can do. You can treat for what you think it is, even mm -hmm. if you don't necessarily think it, it's that, you still want to cover for that. So it's mm -hmm. like, it's balancing all of that, which is tough. But, oh, I'm excited for, her, but it's good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on this last semester. <laughs> yeah, don't don't worry about my problems as a person in their third year of practice as a solo provider at an urgent care. Worry about your first year of PA school stuff right now, and <laughs> you'll get to wherever you want to get to trauma or whatever it might be. Then worry about that. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just like communicating that medicine is just interesting and terrifying. It is, but here we are. Signed up for it. <laughs> Hey, I, I couldn't do anything else. I think it's tremendously interesting. It, it's such a privilege. But uh, I, I got to yeah, cut it here, boys, because uh, my wife is coming home soon, so I have to start dinner soon. Ooh, I forgot. I have another interview at 6. Yeah, we do have to cut it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Busy guy. Okay.
Uh, th yeah, this one's it's good. It's been something I've needed to do for a while. But yeah, talk to your uh, your person, your dean of admissions or whoever they are. I'd love to get them on the channel. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk to the second chance guy, and we'll talk soon. Actually, it, it, it it's a, it's a bigger person than the dean. It would be like the director of uh yeah yeah. And I don't know like, the difference. Oh, <laughs> I think it's the same thing then. <laughs> Heck, if I know, I don't know this stuff. I'm not academic. I, I don't I don't I don't know these things. I'm uh, just a guy moving to North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. But no, literally anybody in your school that wants to talk to me about this and they have something to say, like I'm happy to have them on. Sounds good. Thank you so much yep. for it. It was good seeing you again, man. Missed you. As always. <laughs> we'll talk soon. All right. See you, boys. Bye.